our source, our sustainer, our redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Here we are today, the appointed time, the appointed season, the time and the period we've been looking forward to has finally come. And here we are today, here we are this weekend. We withdraw from every other thing that we do to come together in your presence to seek your face. We come to he hear you again. Tell us your purpose, your plans for us. You said in your word that they that wait upon you, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and they will not be weary. They walk and they will not faint. Through this weekend, Lord, in your very presence we come, every one of us. We humble our hearts, we humble our life, we humble everything before you. We look up to you. Father, to help us to see, to help us to know, to help us to understand that there is nothing more you can do or you will do to bring us to the banquet of your love because you have done every bit of it beyond our imagination, beyond our recognition. We are asking you today, Lord, grant that each and every man every woman in this place that you part the veil, the curtain bring everyone into your very presence the holy of holies where they can hear you expressly where they can see you where they can behold you to the intent that at the end of this it will no longer be business as usual. There will be genuine transformation. Amen. To the intent that at the end of this weekend, men and women are going to walk out of this place. The new man that you have declared and made us to be, men and women who will begin to reign and reign in life with Christ Jesus. This is our heart cry. This is our desire. Let not one person, not even the least, live this weekend the same. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Good evening, everybody. You may be seated. There are two things that you may not have known or may not have heard. That spiritually in heaven or in the things that has to do with spirit, there is nothing like a child. When God is speaking, when God is dealing with us from that realm, from that dimension, from eternity, from heaven where he is, there is nothing like little children. It doesn't exist. That is your five years, your seven years. God doesn't recognize those things. It is only on this side of life, that is on earth, 
that we relate with little children and all of that. When God speaks, he doesn't speak to you as a child. That's why when he was talking to Jeremiah and finished, Jeremiah said, but I'm, he said, do not say that you are a child. And that is why when people do evil and God comes to kill, he doesn't spare even little children. He said, when you come, kill even the children, everybody. He doesn't spare them. He doesn't say, God doesn't have emotion and all of that about little children. Because he treats everybody. He's the same in the realm of the spirit. That's how it is. Why I'm saying this is to let you people, those of you who think you'll be jumping up and down, that God doesn't see you that way. So you better pay attention. Is that clear? This weekend, if you leave today, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, at the end of the day, at the end of this weekend, see, if you, if you are not totally and completely transformed and changed and become the man and the woman that God ordained you to be, I doubt whether you will ever become it in your life. I'm telling you this truth. Because what we want to do is to do a proper down to earth diagnosis. You know how some, when somebody is sick, you take the person to the hospital. The person is in a verge of death. They've tried everything. Nothing is working. So they bring the person to the hospital, we're face to face with the doctor and all of that. All the gadgets and every equipment and all the materials, everything we are in, in place. And they put the person through a machine and they diagnose what the problem is and they begin to deal with that problem. At the end of the day, they discharge that person whole, complete, full, healed. That is what we want to do this weekend. So that at the end of the day, you won't be the person that you used to be. You will need knowledge. See, there are four things you must do. Number one, you must listen. You must hear. You must understand. That's the first thing. And for you to understand, it means you have to listen carefully. If at the end, you did not understand what was said at a point or a certain time, you ask question. So you must hear it. You must accept what you heard. You must speak about what you have heard. You must do it. Did you hear what I say? You must do it. And what I'm going to be sharing with us this weekend is divided into four stages. It is called the four gospel. The four square gospel, if you want to use it that way. And you find it all in the book of Galatians chapter number four from verses one down. Galatians chapter number four, verse one. The first part is from verse, verses one Verses 1, 2, and 3 is the first part. And what does he say? He said, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, is not different from a servant. Though he be lord of all, verse 2, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father, verse 3. Even so, this is where we are going. Even so, when we were children, 
we are in bondage under the element of the world. There was a time. Sin, you were, sin was what brought us into bondage. So that's the first stage. We're going to deal with sin, the issue of sin. The problem of man, the problem of mankind, humanity, every man that is in this world, the major problem that we have as human beings is a problem of sin. And I'm not going to show you what sin does to a man. It is because of sin that we find ourselves the way we are, where we are today. Even those of us who are Christians. So that's the first part. The devastation of sin, the effect of sin, the consequences of sin, what sin had done to humanity. That's the first part. Then verse 4, the second part. He said, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem. Thing. So the first one is the bondage of man by sin. The second one is deliverance. The third one is offering you. That is why the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3. That God has blessed us now with what? All spiritual blessings in the heavenly. And we are going to know, see what those blessings are. We are going to look in the Bible. We will see what those blessings are. Because if you don't know them, there's no way you can. We are for now and no more a servant but a son, and if a son, an heir of God through Christ. Now, the first, sin problem. The second, redemption from sin. The third, you are now made a son. You are no more a servant. You are no more a slave. Then the final step, verse 8. This is one I'm going to take time and explain. Verse 8 is, now that you are a son, now that you are the one that is in charge of everything, everything that belongs to God is yours. They are yours. They belong to you. The big one million dollar question that everybody is going to be asking, if it is so, why then am I living in lack every day? Why then am I still living under the breach? Why then am I still broke and poor? So, you see the first, you see the second, you see the third, you see the fourth stage. That's why it's called the four square gospel. Because if and the, all of them, you must, you must know each and every one of these stages. You must know it the way you know your name is Michael. The way you know your name is Bola, not Ahmed. The way you know your name is your name. You must know the first. You must know the second. You must know the third. You must know the fourth. It is when you have done this, you can now reign. You can now beat your chest and say, yes, I have arrived. If you don't do that, you are back to square. You are still where you are. Did you understand what I mean? Are you following me? So what did I say the first one is? The problem of sin. The Bible said that all have done what? Sinned and come short of the glory of God. The effect of sin is still working on earth today. And one of the things, again, I told you, I was trying to tell you about this, that other side of the spirit. Like, in the realm of the spirit, in eternity with God, in heaven, in the spiritual, they don't recognize anything like children. It is only on this side of life. Number two, in the realm of the spirit, the spirit, 
there is nothing like mercy. They don't do mercy there. Mercy is found here. There is not, there is not, that is why it is written, the soul that sins dies. That's why when Satan rebelled and did what he did, there was no redemption. There is nothing like mercy. Sin is punishable by death. Sin is punishable by death. Till today, even in your life as a Christian. If you go back to where you were delivered from and you go back again and begin to do those things, the same punishment of death will be meted to you. For sin to be forgiven man, somebody had to pay for the debt. Which is Jesus Christ. So there is nothing like mercy. God is showing mercy to us here on earth. It is appointed unto man to die. And after that, what comes next? Judgment. And in judgment, in judgment there, in that judgment, the Bible tells us that we must all appear before the judgment seat of Jesus Christ and every one of us must give account of what he has done in this body, whether they are good or bad. In verse 11 of that First Corinthians 5, he said, therefore, knowing the terror, because there is no mercy, A young man, the Bible tells us about the, the, the king. They say the kingdom of God is like a king who organized a banquet and invited all sorts of people. And then they gathered together in that banquet. And then when the king entered, he saw one person that was wearing a mufti. And he asked him, young man, why were you wearing mufti? He, pushed, he opened his hand and closed. He said, bind him hand and feet and throw him into the... He didn't show mercy. I'm just telling you about the consequences of this. So we start from the first one, which is the sin problem. And if you do not, any man, any woman, who do not understand this, the first stage, you can never be born again. You can't be a Christian. You can't be saved. Because if you don't know where you are coming from, if you don't know where you are, who you were, if you don't recognize that this is who you were, that you are a sinner, sold by to sin, there can't be any salvation, there can't be anything, you can't move on with God. So first of all, that is why the message of sin, the gospel, the, the truth about sin be told. So you first of all will recognize this is what every humanity has been. I come under condemnation. That thing started in the Garden of Eden. When God created the first man, Adam, he created him and then gave, pulled a woman from his ribs and gave him as a helpmate, Adam and Eve. I want you to listen very carefully. It all started with the first man, Adam. In order to, so I'm doing a diagnosis so that you know where the problem started from. So that you can see the reason why you are broke. You see the reason why you are committing adultery and fornication. You see the reason why you are stealing. You see the reason why you are lying. You see the reason why we are falsifying figure. Why we are rigging election. Why we are killing people. The problem that we have on earth today. You see the reason why if somebody is giving certain amount of money or property or something for the general public, the person will just corner it. And The reason is from the garden. The reason why you don't have money, you are broke. It started from the garden of Eden. When God created the first man, Adam and Eve, He put them into that garden to keep it, to tend it. 
they had everything they needed. Adam saw God face to face. Adam saw God. God used to come from heaven to the garden of Eden. Every cool of the evening, he will come and have one-on-one -on -one with him. I'm going to explain to you. Be very, very careful. Because I want to open everything one by one by one by one so that you understand everything. He comes in the day, cool of the day, had one-on-one -on -one with God, fellowship with Adam, did everything. He handed over to Adam the whole of creation. Adam was peaceful. He had everything going for him. In fact, the whole estate of God was handed to man. This is why David, in Psalm 8, in Psalm 8, verse 1, he said, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babe and suckling, thou hast ordained strength because of thy enemy, that thou hast still the enemy and the avenger. He said, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy finger, the moon and the stars, which thou hast ordained. Verse 4. Now you see, David was one talking by the inspiration of God, the Holy Spirit. He said, what is it that you, O God, has seen in man? That you have visited him one on one. That God could come in contact with man and see man and talk with man. He had angels. He has all those other creatures. But one thing about man is that man was created from the image of God. God, he said, let us make man in our image. After all, you know how a woman gives birth to a child. If that child came from your womb, you are so connected. To take that child away from you is killing you. It's another way of killing that person. Because he's a child from your loin. Animals, goat, give birth to goats. Sheep to sheep. Snake to snake. Lion to lion. Sheep to sheep. And all those, everything after his own kind. But God created his own self. He, he created himself. A man. So it was a big problem with David. It was, it was, an, it was not really a problem as per problem. It was, it was, he was awed. He was amazed at the kind of attention and love and passion that God had for man. To the extent that God will make himself available to man. Be with him. See him face to face. Adam. And God, what is it, the man? That, what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him, verse, verse five. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angel, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. He gave man everything. Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have what dominion over all that he had created. He created Adam and gave him everything. Adam had the wisdom of God. Adam had the power of God. Adam wears the glory of God. That's why the Bible said they were naked, but they were not what? Ashamed. They weren't wearing clothes. This clothes you and I are wearing now is uh, because of the fallen nature. This is your body. It's nonsense. In the garden, Adam never had any clothes on him. So what was he wearing? The presence of God, the glory of God was so thick. That his nakedness could not be noticed. The glory is shown 
on Adam. Adam carries the glory of God. Adam carries the image of God. Adam carries the power of God. Adam carried the wisdom of God. Adam carried the everything that is of God that is in Adam. Because God replicated himself in Adam. Just like Jesus Christ said in John 14, 9, he said, if you have seen me, when Philip said, show us the Father, he said, why do you say, show us the Father? Philip, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father because I am the express image of the Father. Adam was the express image of God. So you see what was happening to Adam. You see the state of Adam. You see how Adam was. That is how every other man that was created, that, that came from Adam should be. Like father, like son. That is how God designed for every man, every no sin. There is nothing like cause. There is nothing like poverty. There is nothing like lack. There is nothing like sickness. There is nothing like disease. Adam was like that, all true. That is why the Bible calls Jesus Christ the second Adam. See, what Jesus Christ came to do is to bring us back to the original first Adam to make us like that. Adam will never grow. He will never be weak. You walk and walk. You, you can't hear anything about being tired. He, does, he never got tired. Because the strength of God was in him. The life of God was in him. Then, one day, the unthinkable happened. The disaster occurred. That's where you and I. Inherited it. In Genesis chapter 3. Verse 1. Now, serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, and the Lord God had made, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, had God said, You shall not eat of the tree of the garden? And the woman said unto serpent, unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not do what? eat of it. Neither shall you touch it. Lest you do what? You die. Because God has said to Adam, of all the tree in the garden, everything I have created from the beginning to the end, you have access to do whatever you want to do. But one condition I'm giving you, you see that particular tree that is in the middle? The day you touch it, you will die. And the day he touched it, it happened. No mercy. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat of it. Neither shall you touch it, lest you do what? You die. Verse 5. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely do what? Die. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, you, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Satan was one now speaking. He, he is planning to rob man of his glory, of all those things that God has given to him. That's what he came to steal from him. That's why Jesus said, the devil has come to do what? To kill to steal and to destroy. This is what he came to do. And he succeeded in doing it. So now, for God doth not, for God doth know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as God, knowing good and evil. 
verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also unto her husband with her and he did it. Okay? And the eyes of them were both open and they knew that they were they knew that they were what? And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. apron. Give me Genesis 2.23. Then you come back to this. 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave to him. And they shall become one place. Yes, 25. And they were both what? And the man and his wife. And were not what? They did not know the glory of God was on them. He had the glory of God. So you see, that you are anointed does not mean anything to Satan. Even in this day, the Satan was talking to the woman. He doesn't respect, respect anything, anointing. Satan. Because he was there before. He was the cherub that covered it. Okay, so go back to Genesis 3. Now, the verse 8 said, And they heard the voice of the Lord walking where? in the garden, in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife did what? They hid themselves from the presence of God amongst the trees of the garden. Verse 9. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou, Adam? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was, have you seen where fear started? What is the cause of fear? What is the origin of fear? Sin. Do you know what fear does in your life? You know what fear does? Because of the fear of the unknown, you cannot take action. You are afraid. You are afraid of people. You are afraid of this man. You are afraid of that man. You are afraid of what man can do to you. What caused that fear? Sin came in. That's why people become timid in the face of obvious reality. You are timid. You are ashamed. And somebody can now intimidate you. Somebody can now put fear in you. You can hear some story or some news and all of that that put fear in you. So because of that fear, what you're supposed to do, you will not be able to do it. What you're supposed to say, you will not be able to say. What you're supposed to, where you're supposed to go, you are not able to go. You are cowed in. Your potentials you cannot release. You are afraid. It's because of this is where it started. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was what? Naked. Shame. Sin brings shame. Sin brings fear. Sin brings shame. Shame. Be noting all this because we are going to meet it in it in due course. And he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked and I went into hiding. When you see people you say, You know, I'm a shy person, you know, I am, it is sin. 
You know, I'm shy. The Bible said, the Hebrew chapter 4, 16 said, let us come boldly, not with shy. Because God said in 1 Timothy 1, he said, for God has not given you the spirit of what? Fear. So where is that fear? From Satan. Timidity. So what do you see going on in your life that you don't, it is because of that sin. And he said, who told you that you are naked? And have thou, has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Have you eaten the fruit? Who told you that you are naked? Have you eaten the fruit that I told you not to eat? Who told you, why are you afraid? Who told you you are naked? Why are you hiding? Have you done what I told you not to do? Verse 12. And the man said, The woman that you gave me to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. This singular act, that is what brought devastation and destruction to humanity. Just wait. And the Lord said unto the woman, What is it that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did it. What the, notice what is going on now. A portion of what? Blames. Why did you do this? It's because of this. If this person that pushed me, that is why I fell. Why did you do this? It's because of this person. Why is the government not performing? It's because of the past administration. It's because of the government that was there before. That's why we are having... That is the nature of a fallen man. Sin is the cause of it. So they can't perform. The Bible tells us in 1 John 5, 18, it says, and we know that the whole world lies in wickedness. It's because that sin passed through Adam affected every humanity. That's what happened to humanity. That's what happened to mankind. That's why we find ourselves the way we are today. That's why we are broke. That's why we are sick. That's why poverty, misery, fear, lies and wickedness and killing and all kinds of things that we are seeing today. That's why you can't trust your fellow brother, your fellow sister. You give him something to hold for you, he will spend it. And they start lying to you. A brother is abroad. He sends money to his brother in the, in, the, in the country to help him do business and all of that. And he will be telling him that he is doing, that the business is going on and the house is going on. All are, all are what? Lies. Why did you do this to your own very brother? Sin is from the garden. Eden. It affected every humanity. You and I. We are guilty of it. Because from one man, just wait, we'll get there. Verse 14. And the Lord said unto Serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly thou shalt go, and thou shalt thou, shalt thou eat all the days of your life. That is, he put a curse on Serpent, snake. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and, by, and between thy seed and her seed. And he shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. He's talking about Jesus Christ, but wait. Unto the woman he said, Thou watch, I will greatly multiply thy watch sorrow. The sorrows that women are going through today started way back from the Garden of Eden. And what I'm saying is that you can be born again and you are still under that, inside that sorrow. Because of a couple of things that I'm going to be showing you in due time. Not today. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth what? Children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over 
you. That is why you see man's domination. They will tell you that this is man's world. They subjugate the women under. That's why you see a man marrying three wives, four wives, as if they say they are slaves. In the beginning, God made it one man, one woman. It's because of sin. All those things, say, a man marrying one more than one wife is a cause that is still running. Polygamy is a cause brought upon man as a result of sin from the Garden of Eden. This is where we found ourselves. This is what is hope going on amongst mankind. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto thy voice, unto the voice of your wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cost is a ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life forever. As long as you are in this world, you are going to suffer. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth today. You will labor and labor and labor and labor. You have little or nothing to show for it. This is because you must know where your problem started. And you must know how that problem was resolved. And you must know what is available at your disposal now. And you must know what you need to do in order to experience it, in order to enjoy it. That's why I'm taking this time. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth today, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face, Shall thou eat what? Suffer man. Struggle. Hustling. Man must hustle. It's a cause. For out of it was thou taken. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Till thou return to the ground. For out of it thou was taken, was thou taken for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife name Eve, because he was the mother of all living. 21. Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did God, did what? Made coats of skin, and clothed them. Salvation. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil, and now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent forth man from where? From the garden of Eden, from the land of prosperity, from the land of affluence, from the land where you have milk and honey and everything going for you. Pursued him out of it, sent him packing. Therefore the Lord God sent forth, sent him forth from the garden of Eden till, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Tilling ground, you know, he said he is in toiling. So far. See the words of it. So he drove out the man and he placed at the seat at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of man became a vagabond. The man that was in charge, the person, the man that was in charge now became a slave. Now see, when Adam did what God told him not to do, when he ate of that fruit, it wasn't just a diso ordinary disobedience. What happened was man became born again backwards. In other words, man inherited the nature of Satan. He breathed into him. His nature became evil. He took up the very nature of Satan. 
He entered his spirit man. And from there, he was ruling and controlling him. Man became a slave. Man now is subject to death before he couldn't die. He became afraid. Sickness and diseases and all of that were ravaging humanity. Poverty began to come. Wickedness. The first man, Cain, he gave birth to. And ever Cain slew his brother. Wickedness. He came from as a result of that. That's what is happening in the world today. That's what is happening in Allah. And if you don't understand it, and if you don't know how this thing was resolved, you will be living in ignorance. Meanwhile, your deliverance and everything have been accomplished, but because of ignorance, because you chose not to know, because you are saying, you see, that is why I say, if you don't know this, you are busy pursuing business. You are busy pursuing career. You are busy pursuing all those things. Where before you know what is happening, everything you have built over the years will collapse right in your face. Because this life has nothing good to offer to you. Jesus said, in the world, you will have what? Tribulations. And that is the lure of, this, of, of Satan. That is what he does. He just wants to rub it on your face about the cares of this world, the, the deceitfulness of riches and all of that. Instead of you pursuing the real thing, he will not want you to know it. He wants to keep you in the dark. He doesn't want you to know that your bill, your price has been paid. He doesn't want you to know that you have been redeemed. He doesn't want you to know that the price of your, the consequences of your sin have been dealt with. He doesn't want you to know. So you stay that way. You live that way. Now, give me Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, as by one man sin did what? entered into the world and what death by sin and so death passed upon all men for all have done what so the sin the death we are seeing today is as a result of sin the big man dies the poor man dies little children they die adults they die and when death comes, it will snatch life out of you. And then your parents will start crying. Your brothers will start crying. Your sister is a very painful thing. Who brought it? Sit, Adam, through sin, disobedience. That's why we love, we lose our loved one. They die. Accident, car accident will kill. This person grew up. Before you know what is happening, he's dead, he's gone. That's why people go into drugs. Some of you. The reason why you are doing those things that you are doing is because of this sin. He's holding you captive. Give me Romans chapter 7, verse 12. You give it to me in um, NIV or NLT. What I'm doing now is diagnosis so that you will see where the problem is. But still, the law itself is holy and his command and his command are holy and right and good. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. Verse 13. For sin, seizing the opportunity afforded by the commandment, deceived me and through the commandment put me to death. Verse 12. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy, righteous and good. Did that which is good then become dead to me is a question by no means but in order that sin might be recognized as sin it produced death in me through what was good so that through the commandment sin might become utterly sinful yes go ahead there's yes, somewhere i want to we know that the law is spiritual but i am unspiritual sold as a slave to sin i want to show you what sin is doing in the life of a man i do not understand what i do hello what did he say I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, what happens? But what I hate. 
So I don't understand what is. That's why I'm at a loggerhead with my wife, with my husband. You're fighting with your wife. You're fighting with your husband. Deep inside you, as a husband, you want to love your wife. Deep inside you, as a woman, you want to love your husband and submit to her, to him. But outwardly, are you doing it? The answer is what? No. Why? I do not understand what is happening, no. For what I want to do, I do not. But what I hate, that is what I go ahead and do what? And do. Verse 16. And if I do what I do not want to do, I do not want to keep malice with my wife, I do not want to keep malice with my woman, with my husband, but I ended up keeping malice with my husband, keeping malice with my wife. If I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is what? Good. Verse 17. As it is, it is no longer who I myself who do it, but it is who? Sin doing what? living inside me. Sin is a person. His name is Satan. He's called the man of sin. The lawless man. The antichrist. He's a person. Satan is a person. You want to pray. You want to live good. You want to do things that are good. You don't want to lie. You don't want to steal. You don't want to be doing all. But you end up doing them. Do you know the reason why? Because Satan is living inside of you. He is one controlling you. He is one calling the shot. He is one telling you what to do and what not to do. He is against the law of God. God is saying, thou shalt not steal. I don't want to steal, but you end up saying, because he is living inside you. He is forcing you to do it. That's why you see, man now is under the control of Satan. He became a slave. And as long as you are living under Satan, you are under a curse. Nothing will work for you. Even when you think you are smart and you are building and you are building and you are building, you get to a point, a strange breeze will come. Everything will collapse. A man had a business, multi-millionaire business, multi-million business running. All of a sudden, one day, he just came. They call him on the phone in the middle of the night that your warehouse is on fire. Not by might. It's not by power. Because there is a man. His name is Satan. He's the one living inside men. He's the one doing all this work. So if you, you... So you know what Satan has done? He will make it... He won't make you... He won't let you know that he's the one. He's inside He's the one making you to lie. He's the one telling you not to talk to your brother, not to talk to this person. He's the one telling you that this person hates you. He's the one lying to you that this one says something and the other. All those things. He's the one behind it. And as long as you are in this realm, as long as you are doing all this, the life of God is cut off from you. You will be like the same Adam that was chased out of the Garden of Eden. You have no connection with God anymore. Even if somebody give you $10 billion now, as I'm looking at you, you count $10 billion I give you, is a function of time. Just one, two, three weeks, one month, you will look for that money, you will see it. Why? Sin. It will destroy you and send you to hell. You will be born in the lake of fire forever and ever. You are not coming out from there. Because Jesus said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's the one that is making you look like a madman in the name that you are looking for fashion. He's the one that making you wear, buy clothes. He said, tear the jeans, tear it everywhere and all of that. You will tear it and be wearing it on the, and to you it looks nice. The man inside, because if you cast that man out, you will not wear that thing again. 
that's the madness that you see all over our generation today. That's what is going on. Stealing, lying, killing, cheating, defrauding. It will make you not to have your bath because you don't have soap, because you don't have money. All these things that you see, Satan is behind each and every one of them. Because when Adam was in the garden, he was appearing before the... If you see Adam, Adam was a beauty to behold. God, the glory of God was upon him. It was when he lost that thing, sin entered, destroyed everything. Even the trees, the plants, that is why you see trees are getting sick. Don't you know that six trees are sick? They can be sick with all kinds of things going on. It's because of sin. It's because of the fall of man. Everything was affected. And man was cursed and taken outside of God's presence. No connection with God, no life. You can't draw life again. Hopeless, useless. Curses are reigning in life of so many families, so many generations. You, your family, nobody ever grows and becomes anything. When they get to a certain stage in their life, they die. Some of them don't cross 20. Some of them don't cross 30. Some of them 40. They die. No single person in your family that have ever risen and become a normal human being that you can boast of. Sin. Cuts. Give a man, give a cost man, a man that is a cost, under a cost. Give him the whole of this Nigeria. Eh? This whole of Nigeria. It will rot in his hands. It is war and, and, and death. That's what you are going to, because he can't offer anything. That's why you see the whole of the nations of the earth. If you see the kind of evil and iniquity, even in this Lego that you and I are living, be human beings, they eat human beings. Satan pollute the whole land. So no blessings of God. Heaven is short because of sin. God, wherever there is sin, there is judgment. When you go out, you see hundreds of millions of people moving up and down. It's because of sin. It's because of sin. This is what happened to you and I. That's why you feel sick. Your heart fails. You go to a hospital, you don't have money, you die. You'll be watching your brother, you'll be watching your sister dying. No help. The doctor is confused. Sin. A young man, Jesus Christ, came and he healed him of his sickness. And later he came back to, the, to Jesus and Jesus said to him, Go and sin no more or else worse thing will happen to you. Sin. Sickness and disease. Sin. It is because of sin. That is why you see all these hospitals that you see today. It's sin. Because without sin, there will not be any sick person. That's why you have the courts everywhere. Appeal court, judicial, uh, whatever. High court and low court and appeal court and supreme court and all of that. It's because of sin. To settle what? Crisis between people. And inside that court, they will be lying. Sin. So that is why if you think, if you live in this world, if you carry your heart and your faith and put it in this world, you will go down the same way. I now 
no, I know that nothing good lives in me. That is, in my sinful nature, for I have the desire to do what is what? How many of you have the desire to do what is good? But you find out that you cannot carry it out. How many of you have made New Year resolutions? 31st December, I won't drink again. 31st December, I won't smoke again. 31st December, I won't go to party again. On the 1st of January, you have done all of them again. <laughs> what is the cause? See. It happened to me, I used to do it. Because I used to smoke. Because I used to drink. I did all kinds of evil things. Every 31st December, I make New Year resolution. Sometimes I will bring out paper, I will write it. I will not do this, I will not do this, I will not do that. This is what I will do, this is what I will do. When I finish, I will keep it. On the 1st of January, 2nd of January, all those things I say I'm not going to do again. I have completed all of them, I have done them again. I say, oh, what is all this in again? The power to do it is not there. But the willingness is there. But the power is not there. Why? Because there is somebody that is living inside you. That is making you do it. He would want you to do what he wants you to do. You can't control it. That's why you find yourself smoking and smoking. You can't stop. And when they see you, you will lie. Why I'm saying this is because the deliverance is coming your way. You see, if you want to deal with the enemy, you have to identify him. If you don't identify the enemy, you can't. You know what he you know what Satan does? He masks himself, he goes and hides behind. You won't know that he's the one doing it. You won't know that he's the one making you to lie. He won't know that he's the one making you to steal. He won't know that he's the one making you to hate your brothers. He will hide behind the scene. And until you discover him, until you find out, the day you find out that he's the one, that act will stop. True or false? So that's what I want to do. That's what I'm doing with you now. So that you identify, see, this is what the problem is. This is where it's coming from. What sin has robbed us is a lot. When I read my Bible, I, there are certain things when I read. I say, my, I close the Bible, I start crying. I cry. Sin is destructive. Sin is not just that I lied. It's beyond lying. It's much more than lying. It destroys your life. It destroys your destiny. It destroys your future. It destroys everyone that is connected to you. Your brother, your sister, your mother, your father. Every of them. Because the same sin that happened to Adam, that Adam committed. Why are we suffering it today? Were you there when he committed it? So why are you suffering it today? Sin is a spirit. If you know what is involved, you will run away from it. You will run. If you see sin, you will run. It is very destructive. It is very damaging. It will destroy and ruin your life. And you will think you are smart. And Satan likes it. And you are smart. He is very happy. That's what he does. He will tell you to fight. He will tell you to steal. And you'll be stealing and be stealing and be stealing. And as you're stealing, you steal more. You steal this one, you want to steal again. And as you're stealing, you are piling it, you are piling it, you are piling it. Until every day is for the thief. The day will come, all of a sudden, he won't tell you. He will strike. Everything will go. They don't live long. If you know what sin is like, if you know what sin does, immorality, adultery, fornication. Who is behind it? Satan. 
sodomie. Lesbianisme. Gay. LGBTQ. Somebody wakes up, say he doesn't feel like a man again, that he's now a woman. Satan. Destruction. I want to, you see, I want you to do a research, a little research. Find out somebody who is a drug addict or Yahoo. You know Yahoo boys, all those Yahoo. I want you to find one very good Yahoo boy. I want you to take a study. Look at his life. Look at his generation. Look at his brothers and his sister. Look at his parents. Look at, go back. What you will see, you will not like it. But in the open, Satan will sell everything to you. Make it look. Because, you know what he did to Adam and Eve? It was destruction. He presented that thing to be good. But behind is a stink of death. So the moment he ate it, boom, everything is done. That's what we meddle with today. We lie, we cheat, we defraud, we, we play, we, we joke with people, say all kinds of things, do all kinds of things. And you think you are good, you think you are smart. It, let me tell you, the Bible says, do not be mocked, for God cannot be mocked. Galatians chapter 6. For what a man does what? What will happen? Give it to me, Galatians 6. Do not be what? God cannot be. A man does what? You reap what you do what? You sow. If you sow adultery, you will reap adultery. If you sow Yahoo, you will reap it. Nobody will save you from it when the time comes. And if you eat out of it, if you join them, you will be part of it. Sin is very destructive. If you don't think so, look around. Look around the whole of the country. Look around the whole of the nations of Africa. Look around the whole world. That's why we don't have peace. That's why we are not happy. We are not rejoicing. We are not settled. That's why we are walked up. That's why you suspect everybody around you. That's why you think some people are your enemies. Some people don't. You, so, the, the Bible says they were naked and they were not ashamed. They were open. So that is the first thing that happened, diagnosis of our present condition. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Now, we're going to go to the solution. It's called redemption. Give me that Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. And when the time had fully come, what happened? When the time had fully come, God sent his what? Son, born of a woman, born under the law. To do what? Verse 6. To redeem those under Law that we might receive the full right of sons. I'm going to when I'm when the time comes, when I'm going to tell you about your sonship and all, you will cry. Now, I want you to watch redemption. The meaning of the word redemption to redeem means to pay a ransom, to pay a price in order to regain what you have lost. 
you have to pay a price. What is the price for man's disobedience? What is the price for the disobedience of man, for man's sin? Death. So what happened was that Jesus Christ, now God has sent Jesus Christ to come. Because God, like I told you, in the spiritual realm, there is nothing like forgiveness. There is nothing like mercy. That's why God is, God is a just God. If you say, you say the guilty will never go unpunished. Even though you are born again now, filled with the Holy Ghost, you talk in tongues. If you commit sin and you don't repent of it, and you don't, He will judge you. He can't look the other way. That is God for you. That's what happens in the realm of the spirit. So, because of the sin of man, there had to be what the program of God, the plan of God to save man from sin and from the clutches of Satan. And from all the consequences of man's sin. And so Jesus Christ came to bring that redemption to man. First Peter chapter 1, verse 17. And if you call on the Father, who without respect of person judged according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. He's talking to Christians here. He's not talking to unbelievers. He said, now, if you call God a father who does not respect, he's not a respect of any man. He said, and he judges according to every man's work. He's not a partial God. Whatever you deserve, he will give it to you. He said, therefore, you need to live the rest of your life here on earth with what? In fear. Because you know, God is a just God. For as much as you know that you were not what? Redeemed with what? Corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your father. You are not redeemed. The price that is paid over you is not with money. Is not with dollars, is not with pounds, is not with euro, is not with even ordinary human blood. The price is so high, it requires the life, pure blood, life without spot, without wrinkle. Where can we get it on this earth? Where can we buy it? Where who can give it to us? Nobody. So the price that is put over your head in order to redeem you is out of this world. That's why Jesus said, what shall it profit you? You lose your soul and gain the whole world. The price over your life is much. He gathered the whole money put together in this world. What is money? Say, gather the entire world with all the wealth and everything. Put it on one side and then bring a human soul. On the other side, he said the human soul is what there is no basis for comparison in the first place. Because if you know what your life is with God, he said, So you are not redeemed. God did not come to redeem you. He didn't just walk into the whatever and then die for you. He didn't. No. He was asking Isaiah, he said, who shall we send? Who shall go for us? No one. And Jesus said, here am I. But with the precious blood of who? Christ. As of the lamb without what? Blemish and without spot. Other people make sacrifices. They make sacrifices with pigeons. They make sacrifices with God with animals. Even they make sacrifices with human beings. Even more, the, the most powerful sacrifice human beings make. You know the most powerful? The sacrifice they made with virgins. That's the highest. The most powerful sacrifice. 
They do it every day here in Lagos. They do it all over in Nigeria. They do it over everywhere in Africa. Human sacrifice, blood. There are kada, there are levels. The purer the blood, the more the powerful. The purer the blood, the more powerful. So what do we have as the highest among men? Blood of a virgin. It could be a young boy, it could be a young man that has not slept with a man, that has not slept with a woman. That's the highest. So with that, they will kill the person, offer those things to their deities and all of that, and they energize those demons and all of that, and they come out and they start operating. But now, see, the Bible said that it is with what? The precious blood of Jesus Christ, as of the Lamb without blemish, without spot, no sin, no sin, sinless. That is the one that God accepts. That is the only sacrifice that God can accept. So you can now see how much do you want? You know they say every man has a price. So what is your price? Somebody now come and give you 20,000 naira, you will lie. Somebody comes now and give you 1 million naira, you will come and tell false witness, be a false witness. So your price is 1 million. Some people, your price is 10 million. Some people, their price is 500 million. Some people, their price is 1 billion. Don't be careful. Oh. Don't be, you know, this is you are doing now. Let this, somebody now come around you now and drop, drop 10, 10 million dollars and tell you to do something that is bad and say whether you will not do it. Because that is your price. But for me, 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 say me. me. Say you. Me. I say, say you. Me. <laughs> Give me all the money that is on this world for me to lie. I would rather do what? Die. I won't touch it. I won't even think about it twice. I won't even say, let me go and think about it. It won't happen. If, I'm think, if I tell you, let me go and think about it, it means that I'm stupid. Because that is not my, my price. Give me the precious blood of Jesus without spot and wrinkle, without blemish. Give it to me, then you can buy me. Because that is the price over me. I can't stoop low. Do you know there is a price that was made over you? Don't you know? Don't you get it? You see, that is the reason why we do the things we do. Because we don't know our worth. We don't know our value. It is ignorance that is another major problem that we are suffering today as Christians. Ignorance is eating us up. That is why Jesus said, God said in his word, Hosea 4, he said, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. My people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. So somebody come down and, and give you give you five five thousand naira. You go and uh, you say go and beat that person up. Just take ten ten thousand. You now go and beat somebody up. The, your price is ten thousand. You are an animal. Animal is even better than you. Ten thousand me ten thousand naira ten. Well, no, because some of you, because some of you have not seen 100,000 Naira together. 
So they bring 100,000 naira and give you. That is why you go and sell. You, you sell your generation, both the generation year to come. Because when you finish, tomorrow you are going to get married. Tomorrow you are going to raise children. The children you are going to raise are corrupt. Those things that you have done is going to follow them all. Even after you are dead, after you have died, after you are dead, it will still be running in your life. That's why I say sin is very destructive. Sin is bad. Give me Exodus chapter 5 verse 20. Sorry, Exodus 25. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For the Lord, for I the Lord thy God, I am what? A jealous God. I visit the sin or iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. I will visit them. Run from sin, oh. Tell somebody before, beside you, say run. Eh, you are, I'm not talking about joking. I say tell the person, run. Uh -uh. You didn't say it well. Tell the person beside, say, flee. flee. Is it sin? Flee. Don't touch it. It is better for you to die of hunger. So let's look at what Jesus Christ did. Every aspect of your life the consequences of your life, you took care of them. You need to see what they are. You need to know what they are. You need to know what it is that he did. Number one, I call it the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Because of sin that man committed against God, man now became weak to sicknesses and diseases. That is why you see diseases and sicknesses ravaging humanity. So he came to pay for that cause. Isaiah chapter number 50 verse 5. I call it the suffering of Jesus Christ. The first one is about his stripes. Let's look at, okay, give me Matthew 27, Matthew 27 verse 26, before you come to Isaiah. Matthew 27, 26. 25. This is the trying of the trial of Jesus Christ. When Pilate saw that he could not prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just man. See ye to it. Verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and on our... Have you seen how people bring causes upon themselves and upon their children and upon their children's children? Verse 26. Then released he who Barabbas unto them, and when he had scorched Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So the punishment now starts from here. After he finished beating him, flogging him, and then he released him to the Jews for them to go and crucify and punish. 27. Then the what? The soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of who? Can you imagine? One band. You know what is a band? A band of soldiers? Can you imagine 12 wicked soldiers? You know how soldiers behave. They don't have human party, 
human, they don't have conscience. Because of the way they were trained, they, the way they train soldiers, not this kind of soldier they are, we have here, the way they train proper soldiers, that's why they don't have emotions. That's why they, they, they obey the last command, they point in whatever. Even if it's his brother, he will shoot him. Wicked, their heart is at the back. You know what they did to him? They removed the clothes upon his yeah, tore it and removed it. Tied his hand. Tied the other one like this. Twelve wicked soldiers. And they were taking turns. Because this one will flog and flog and flog and get tired. He will come out. Another person will step in. And he will continue. Guess what they use? You know that whip? You know, they call it koboko. That koboko that has so many... You know what I'm talking about? Then, on each strand of that koboko, on each strand, they tied metals, sharp, sharp metals, the ball hole and tie it inside. So this one has length of it, broken metals. Another one, maybe in the whole bunch, you have maybe like five of those strands with metals. So when they turn it like this, it will be making noise. So what they do is that they lie him then and then somebody will pull. And when they flog him, the thing will turn around his body. And then they pull it. Another person. Give me Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6. That's why the Bible says they make you know what is rich? You know what it means to make it rich. I gave them my to be to the what? Smithers. And my cheek to them to do what? To pluck off the hair. Who has beers here? Uh -huh. Can you allow us to pull like five? They grab it like this, pull it, the thing came out. Broke his heart back. Twelve soldiers burned. Wicked. Pull, 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 pull. They will peer and draw. They will tear and draw. His whole back. Is, when you see Jesus, you see that is why the Bible said, "Do not make any graven image of God. Is that for anything that represents anything in heaven? Because you can't. You see that Jesus you they see on the cross with a smooth face, with smooth body." And then with clothes on his loins is a lie. Read Isaiah 53, you see the picture of that man. No man can see him. No mortal man can see him and remain the same. It's only a devil can see him and stand. The Bible says his visage was mad. They beat his face eh, beyond repair. You wouldn't know where the nose is and where the eyes is. He did it for you. The Bible says, he who knew no sin was made sin. He was bruised for your iniquities and for my iniquity. This is what he did. It is not a figment of imagination. It is not a story tale. It happened. It was real. That's why the account was recorded in the Bible. I gave my back to the smiters and my cheeks to them that pluck off the hair. I did not face, I did not face from, I didn't, I hid not my face from shame and from smitting, spitting. He spat in his face. Who were they doing this thing to? Who is Jesus? God. He kept quiet. 
He was paying the price for your sin and for my sin. He endured it. He endured it for your sin and for my sin. He went through all that. Give me Isaiah 53, verse 6. As all we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of who? You and I, all of us. I told you, anywhere God sees sin, he will destroy it. He will condemn it. He will judge it. Even on Jesus Christ, he will judge it. He can spare you. God hates sin. God hates sin. Verse 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not he opened not his mouth he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb he opened not his mouth verse 8 he was taken from prison and from judgment and who shall declare his generation for he was cut off out of the land of the living for the transgression of my people was of my people was he striking Give me, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. An innocent person. Yet he pleased the Lord to do what? To bruise him. He had put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. It's because of you and I. He went through all this. Give me, give me verse 6. The chastisement of our peace. 5. But he was wounded for our what? Transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. So why did he go through all that? For your healing. So every sickness and every disease that will ever come to you, he had paid that price. Because sickness and diseases are as a result of what? Sin, So he had paid for it. So that sickness and diseases will not do what? So that sickness and disease will not do what? Come to you again. Now, the question is, why is it that after all that he had done, after he went through all this, you are still sick? Why are you still sick? Is it possible for you to live your life on this planet Earth without being sick? Is it possible? Capital yes, Y E S. The question now is why is it not happening? Number one is ignorance. But that knowledge is coming your way today. But number two. Number two is what? Sin. If you go back again. Find it for me. Go and sin no more. Or else. Worse thing. Will happen to you. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made what? Whole. 
sin, sin what? No more. After Jesus has healed him, he said, do not sin again or else what will happen? Worse sin will come on you. You see the reason why I say you have to run and flee from sin. If you don't want sickness, if you don't want sickness, either tomorrow or next, we're going to be talking to you about the other side of it. There are natural laws. How to make sure that your health, you keep your health and all of that. There are natural laws you're going to bear. But majorly, the spiritual angle of it, you must know. One of the natural laws, if your environment where you are living is dirty, eh? if you live in a dirty environment that will breed mosquitoes and all kinds of insects and all of that, what will happen? Mosquito carries plasmodium that causes malaria. So when, because the environment is dirty, dirty, they inhabit there and then they breed and then they will bite you. And when they bite you, they will inject mosquito parasite, I mean malaria parasite, inside your blood, and you'll come sick. So you make sure that your environment is clean. You make sure that you clean up yourself. Clean up yourself. Have your bath, brush your mouth, look neat and tidy. If you don't do that, you are going to force it, even though you are born again, even though you are keeping yourself clean. But essentially, sin is what attracts sickness and disease. Do you know, can you see any ant here? Can you see any ant? So what happened now? What do you think will happen if you drop a cube of sugar here? What will happen? It will appear. It will attract. That is like sin. Sin attracts Satan. Sin attracts sicknesses. Sin attracts diseases. First Corinthians, First John chapter five, verse eighteen. Know you that we know that whosoever is born of God do what? Sineth not. But he that is begotten of God does what? What does he do? He keepeth himself, and what happens? The wicked one will not touch you. Since I got born again, I'm not going to the hospital and lie down. And they are giving me drip and ejection because I am sick. That was since 1990. But before then, I used to be sick. Why? Yes, Jesus Christ had paid the price. Anything that is wrong in your life, you have every right to, re, to reclaim it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Anything that is wrong in this my body, in this your body, you have every right. If you allow sickness in your body, it's a slap on the work of redemption. It means that what Jesus Christ did was a waste of time. He, can't, he couldn't have paid all this, went through all this, and then Satan will come and rob sin again and rob diseases and sickness. Let it be cancer. Let it be anything that you call it. Call it any name. He paid for it. The only one reason why cancer will come to me is because I find myself in sin. Cancer is demonic. He's a demon. All the people that had sicknesses and diseases, they came to Jesus. Did it, what did the Bible say? And he healed them all. Long after he had finished paying that price, went through the things he went through, and then Satan will now come and put it back on me. I say no. So that is why I keep myself what? Clean. Even when I make mistakes, 
Is it that we don't make mistakes? Do we make mistakes? Do we sin? He said, if you confess your sin, he is what? Just and faithful. He will forgive you and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Don't live in malice and carry it over. Don't live on forgiveness and carry it over. It's a danger. The day it will strike. Maybe you are born again now and you are carrying malice and you are doing whatever and you are getting over it. Satan is very smart. He's waiting for you. When the grace, because God has been waiting patiently that you repent because what is coming your way, you will never be able to take it. The day he will strike, Satan will strike. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and the wicked one will not touch you. You become untouchable. That's why you cannot be saved. Maybe because you sinned, something happened, and that is why, because the Bible says, anyone that breaks the hedge, what will happen? Serpent will come and bite. That is sickness. That is disease. Because you have broken the hedge. It will come in and it will strike. But he said, if you com if confess your sin, he's just and faithful, and he will do what? Forgive you, and does what again? Cleanses you from all unrighteousness. Be angry and sin not. Give it to me. He, um, Ephesians chapter 4. I think it's 20. He said, be angry and sin not. And do not let your anger. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Ephesians chapter 4. Did he say you should not be angry? No. Be angry. And do what? Let not what? You are angry today. Hmm? You carry it over to the next day. And you don't know why there is always crisis in your family, in your marriage, in your office. Do people keep malice for how many days? Eh? For one day? <laughs> what do you think such people are like? You are defiled. You know what is defilement? You are corrupt. Inside of you is the corrupt. Let me show you. That is why he said, be angry and sin not. And let not, let not the sun go down on your wrath. You carry your anger over the next day. You become a witch. You can be born again. No? You can be talking in tongues. No? You are a witch. If somebody tells you that is who you are, you will not like it. But that is the truth. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of what? Any root of what? Springing up, trouble you, and thereby you are defiled. You have defied yourself. You've defied your temple. First Corinthians 6, 19 says, If any man defile the temple, what will happen to him? God will do. Because, do you know why? Because you are the temple. Temple of who? God is living inside of you. And inside that house where God is living, you are inviting Satan and sin and getting it messed up. You are unholy. You are a candidate of Satan and hell. 
you become vulnerable and open. That is the reason why those of them who are Christian, born again, are sick. That is why he said, anyone born of God, whosoever is born of God does not sin. And whosoever is a child of God, he said he keeps himself. The wicked one will not touch you. You see, that's why I am giving you the diagnosis and showing you the solution and all of that. When it comes to sickness. And that's why I'm telling you, since I got born again and all of that, I've not been sick for more than 20, 30 years now. Because I know that sickness, the causes of sicknesses and diseases, Jesus Christ has paid a price for it. It cannot come to me. And he turned around and said to me, see that you don't go back to where you were brought out from. Don't go back to your vomit. Don't go back to lying. Don't go back to keeping malice. Don't go back to stealing. Don't go back to all of this. Because if you do, worse things will happen to you. So we wonder why the sicknesses and diseases and all of It's not about praying and praying and praying. You can be praying. Is it possible for somebody to be fasting and praying and he has grudges in his heart? So what are we doing? This is, what our, this is where our problem is. And you know what? Many a times, a lot of you are living this kind of life. You have seen known sin. You know that this is wrong and you allow it. And God will keep quiet. Satan will keep quiet. And God is patient with you and waiting for you to repent and turn away from it. And you refuse. One day, two days, one week, two weeks, three weeks, one month, six months. The day it will strike. Hmm? The day it will strike. The devastation and the destruction is going to make. You will not like it. Sometimes he claims life. Stealing from one another. A fellow brother, a fellow Christian. Born again of the same. You lie and cheat and steal. You know what you are? You are vulnerable. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26. Or let's just go straight to 30. Okay, go, go 28. Do 28. For... But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. He's talking about communion now. Okay? For he that does what? Eateth and drinketh unwordly, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not doing what? Discerning the lost body. You are having issues with somebody and you come to the communion table and you are eating it. Because of this, how many are weak? Weak is that nothing is working for you. Your business, your career, your job is struggling. And we wonder why we are the way we are. We are the cause of our problem. For this cause, many are weak, are sickly among you, and many... What is sleep? Many died. So many of the, see, the people you see dying. The sickness you are seeing today, sin. Who is he writing this letter to? Unbelievers. Believers, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, tongue talking. So tomorrow we won't around. Why is this? Why is this one happen? Why is that one happen? Why me? And then you are looking for where to get money to go and treat yourself. You finish, you back to square one. Live a clean life. I will give you another one. Matthew chapter 18. Give me 25. Twenty, 
Let's start from the beginning. For where two or three are gathered together in the men. Then Peter came to him and asked, Lord, how often should I forgive someone who sinned against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied. But what? Seventy times is equal to what? Four hundred and... So what it means is that somebody will sin before you will stop forgiving the person. Before you say, the person, I'm not going to forgive you again. The person must have sinned how many times? In a day. Somebody must have sinned against you how many times? 490 times a day. So, who has sinned against you 490 times? Eh? Yeah? If there is anybody that has sinned against you 490 times in a day, can I see you? You have the right not to forgive that person. But if the person has not sinned up to 490 times, you don't have the right not to forgive him. Is that clear? So as often as they sin against you, what do you do? For your own sake. So that I don't get my body defiled. Because when I get my body defiled, I will be weak. Things will not go work for me. Struggle will begin. Satan go they come. Monkey go they walk. Baboon go they collect them. I don't want it. And then God will say he will destroy the temple because it is defiled. The presence of God will not be in your life again. You can't hear from God again. That's why you see them when they have all these, they, all these so-called prophets and all of that. They, that's why the Bible says, before a man can be judged to be a prophet, first of all, they say, by their fruits, you shall know them. So when a person says he's a prophet or he's hearing from God or he's prophesying or whatever, look at it. Because if you're not living a clean life, you are a false prophet. What you are giving us is false. Because your temple is defined. It's corrupt. It's mixed up. So what is coming out of you is not clean. It's adulterated. And you open yourself to Satan. Now he said, not even, no, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 70 times seven. Verse 23. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his account up to date with servant who had borrowed money from him. 24. In the process, one of his debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay, so his master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything he owed to pay the debt. But the man fell down before his master and begged him, please be patient with me, and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him, and he released him and forgave him his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat like this and demanded instant pay me. No, 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 be tomorrow again. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. But be patient with me. I will pay it. He pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested. He went because he knows the police. A police has, uh, you know, if police, if you go to police and say somebody is owing, you see corruption everywhere. Police will tell you, somebody is owing you 100,000. They'll say, so how much? Let's do 70, 30. You give me 50%, you take 50%. I will recover the money, then you give me. That's what they do. Corruption everywhere. From the high places. From the first man to the last, that's what they do. Evil. Look at their children. Look at their generation. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put him in prison until the, the debt could be paid in full. 
When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. And then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous death because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to wear prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. Now watch. That is what who? Who? What do you call him? Heavenly who? Uh -huh. That is what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and your sisters from have you seen it? Have you seen what is going to happen? You know, every time, by his stripes, I am healed. I claim my healing in Jesus' name. I am, um, by his stripes, I am healed. By his stripes. Meanwhile, you are bearing grudges with someone. Meanwhile, you have not forgiven the person that offended you. Are you going to be healed? So you come and line up for prayers to be healed. It's not going to work. You have stolen from somebody. You have defrauded somebody's money. You have stolen somebody's money. You have, uh, you have extorted money from somebody. Block the road. Every car that passes, he, if he doesn't give you whatever, you know it's going to pass. So you, you are extortioner. You extort money. When you finish now, tomorrow you are sick. You now come for healing. You know, Satan... After extorting that money, maybe the money you finish extorting is 10,000 naira. You will fall sick. When you go to the hospital, they say you are going to pay 17,000 naira. That 10,000 naira you extorted, you will give it. Then you go and borrow another 7,000, join on top of it, and go and pay. You don't know what is happening. Because you think you are smart. I don't just get it. How many of you are smarter than God here, please? Can I see your hand up? If you know you are smarter than God. So what is our problem? This is what is destroying and ruining the body of Christ. Malice, anger, bitterness. Now, let's finish it. That is what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive those Give me NI, um, King James. See what he says. See how King James put it. So likewise shall my heavenly father all, do also unto you if, your, if from your heart forgive not everyone that is his brother their trespasses. The same way he handed, he say, another translation says he will hand you over to your tormentor they will torment you. Sickness and diseases. It will ravage the person. You see? 34. 34. And his Lord was wrought and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due unto him. Tormentor, that's how the heavenly father. He didn't say God, he said heavenly father. That is, is your father. You are his son. You are, his, you are living in unforgiveness. You are living in malice. You are living in bitterness. Your heart is corrupt and defiled. Everything about your life will start going down. Then you come for prayer. That is why the prayer is not working. You don't even need anybody to pray for you. If I am sick, I look into my life. Did I offend my wife? Is my wife not happy with me? Did I offend my children? Did I offend any of the brethren? Is there any person that I'm not happy with? I will check it. If I find none, I will still ask God to cleanse me and all of that. And after that, I will command whatever that is wrong in my body to be put right. And after that, it happens. I'm set free. It works. Matthew 5, 23. 
Matthew 5.23. For if you bring your gift to the altar and there you remember that your brother had something against you, Leave there your gift before the altar and go your way first. And do what? Reconcile with your brother. Reconcile with your sister. And then come and offer the gift so that that gift will be acceptable to God. If you don't do that, it is not acceptable. God will not even accept you. Neither did he accept what you are giving to him. So of what use? I've told you, is it, we are going to come to the area of, uh, there are some, we are still on one. That is why I say we are not going to be in a hurry this weekend. We are still dealing with one. This one is just about your sickness, your health. Only, you can, we can have a church year in year and nobody falls sick. If there is any sickness in the body of whatever, the next thing is uh, you, you know what to do. So that tomorrow, if for any reason you fail sick, you fall sick, you look into your life. Is my body defiled? Is my body unclean? Because if it is unclean, it will attract sin. It will attract Satan. It will attract sickness. It will attract diseases in my body. It will make me weak, even in the works of my hand. When I start losing money and nothing is working and all of that, check it. Have I lied to my brother? Have I stolen from the bro my brother? Have I cheated? You know, somebody, you are there, you are here, you are looking at somebody's phone to pick. Uh, they just do like this. You pick the phone and then you switch it or put it inside your stockings. You know, because you are what? Smart. Clap for yourself. You are trying. Continue. Don't stop. When, when, when the time comes, what will happen to you? You see, no amount of prayer will save you. No amount of hospital, no doctor will help you. Because what is after you is heaven against you. You know why I'm doing it? Because I have sat down several times in my life. I said, how can, when I read the Bible about what Jesus did, how then can a Christian be sick? One month later, you are sick. Two months later, you are still in the sick bed. Three months later, you are still in the sick bed. One year later, you are in the same sickness. And it is growing worse. Why? There is no smoke without what? Fire. Sin has come in. In and through the generational cause, which we are going to also look at. If you keep yourself, if you keep yourself, the wicked one will not touch you. But the problem is that we don't keep ourselves. If you don't forgive your brother, if you don't forgive your sister, if you keep malice, if you have ill feeling towards somebody, sickness, one sickness to another. But if you want to be whole and clean, as you see me, as you're looking at me, Sickness, I have no business with it. Disease, I have no business with it. Weakness, my body is strong. My, you know when we were doing the work in the church in Yaba? When we were building that church? I will leave my house by 7 o'clock in the morning. I will walk, ask, couldn't let them and all of that. Some of those young boys will be there walking, walking till 10 o'clock in the night, 11 o'clock in the night, 12 midnight, we are still walking. 1 a.m., I, I was still in the church walking. These young, young boys that they are not, some of them are 
I am, some of them, I'm 40 years older than them. They will go somewhere and snore it. They say, Pastor, why? Well, one day they just gather together. They say they want to ask me something. I say, what is it? He say, Pastor, why you know the tire? Because I'm full of life. Any the spirit of God, strength, inner strength, the spirit of might. And I will finish it. One o'clock I will go. By the time I get home, it's past one o'clock. The following day, seven o'clock again, I'm back. And when I come, I will see anybody until around 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. When they, I will be the one going to fish them out where they are. When they see me, they will be dodging. Say, Pastor, don't come again. Uh, me and no rest. What of me? What about me? I'm older than you. I have four children. You are maybe 20 or 25. Your pastor is about 50, something or 60. And he's pursuing you to come and walk. Do you know why? I was like Caleb. I read in my Bible, Caleb, in the book of Joshua. He said he was 80. He said 80 years old. He went to Joshua. He said, give us our own portion. Give us, let me go and fight. Because I, my strength now that I am 80 is like when I was 40. The strength of a 40-year-old man is still in me. I will fight at 80. Look at the 80. Have you seen 70-year-old? Some of them are with clutches like this. Something is wrong, oh. I said something is wrong with our generation. And this man was an old covenant man. Old Testament. What is happening to us? What is our problem? Sin. Meddling with sin anyhow. Somebody actually, a pastor said you can be lying up on top of a woman. If rapture calls, you go to heaven. Because grace has covered you. That is what we are seeing today in the body of Jesus Christ. That is why the church is the way it is today. We don't want to live a life of holiness. Give me First John 3. Behold, what manner of love is this? That we should be called the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we should be like. But one thing we know is that when he appears, we shall be like him. First John 3. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. For he, therefore, the world knoweth us not because he knew him not. And verse 2 says, Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we should be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be, for we shall see him. Verse 3. Every man that does what? had this hope in him. What does he do? Some of you are like scorpion. Abbey. Little thing, you will stink. <laughs> so, they know you, they know they come near you. Say, ah, Auntie Maggie, no go near, no go area. He will stink you. And you are pride in. Look at your life. Just look at your life. If you know what God has in store for you, see, we are the cause of our problem. Nobody, not you are the cause of your problem. Keep yourself. And you will see the life of God, what he can do in a man. Okay. Let me go to the second one. The first one was about your sickness, okay? And I've told you how that that sickness and diseases have been taken care of by his stripes. You have been healed. The reason why you still have sickness in your body is because of what? Sin. 
malice, unforgiveness, lies, all those things you do with your fellow brothers. When you do them, those things will happen to you. Cure ED. If you like, fast. Some of you pray more than me. Some of you fast more than me. I'm better than me. But I'm stronger than you. Because I know they're sick. Because I know they're weak. It's living the life. The second thing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ had redeemed us from what? Do you know that cause we're talking about here? When Adam sinned, he put a curse on man, he put a curse on the woman. And down the ages, curse. What is curse? What is a curse? A curse, hmm? You see, a cause is that you will labor and labor and labor and labor and have little or nothing to show for it. Sometimes everything that you have labored for, before you could say Jack Robinson, the thing is in the thin air. One thing or the other will just come, finish it. Or maybe in your family, nobody ever succeeds. Nobody ever grows or rises. Maybe in your family, nobody crosses a certain age, they die. In the family, nobody gets married. The one that gets married, they are divorced. They go, go back to their husband's house. They are if, you see the kind of, if you see the kind of thing that I see, as a pastor. Sometimes it is sickness and sickness and sickness everywhere. As a result of what your parents did, you know what we are suffering? That cause that God put on man is still running to you today. It's only, only those who come to Christ will bring an end to it. It's only when you come to Christ you bring an end to it. Now the Bible says, Christ had done what? Redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. For it is written, cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. Give me Matthew chapter 27. Verse 27, 28. And then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and they began and they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And when they had plated a crown of what? Thorns. They put it upon his what? Head and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Verse 30. And they did what? Spit upon him. And they took the reed from his hand, and they did what? In all tongues, you know how sharp, hmm? They use it and make a crown and then put it on his head. Press it. The thing entered his head. Then they took that reed. Bore! The thing entered. And then he started smiling. It wasn't fun. It wasn't funny. You can think about the kind of headache. You can think about the kind of pain. Cause. He did it. 
he is paying the price, the consequences of the sin of Adam that have ravaged humanity. So he came to put an end to it that anyone that put his faith in him will bring an end to it. It will no longer happen to you. That is why he said, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But you can be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost. All things have passed away, but the cause is still following you. For two reasons. Number one, lack of knowledge. I've said it several times. My own personal father, my biological father, the one that gave birth to me, 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 was an occult man. And this kind of cult is not this year year cult they are doing today. There is no, my dad, hmm? a madman. So that's why I say the cult they are doing today are useless cult. You are bony or whatever. Maybe, maybe. My dad, a madman, enters our house, compound. A madman. He came out and slapped him. My dad wasn't born again. He came out and slapped that madman. That madness cleared. The man became sane. My dad wants to write a letter now to you. He's in Sokoto, you are in Lagos. He wants to write a letter to you. He doesn't go to um, post office. He will just get the letter, write it. After writing it, he will burn it, set it on fire. When that letter finishes burning, you will collect it in your house. You will read it. For our compound in the village in those days, Masquerade know they enter our house. If Masquerade enters, he dies. All sorts. All those things affected us. Because like father, the iniquities of children that do not love me, I will visit their iniquities. The first, the second, the third generation. His generation is 40 years three generations, four generations is 160 years. It's going to ravage the family. And it will continue. In my family, nothing, nothing. Nobody they see, nobody. All of us born, nobody married. The one that is married had no come out. The house they build, my father built. You know that house, square house, square. One, two, three, four, like this. Then on this side, two, one room here, one room here, one room here. So parlor is in the center. So when once you open your door, you are inside the parlor. We had latrine. You know the one they call latrine. When you want to go to the toilet, you go outside. We are a football team, eleven. Nobody, nobody, nobody knows nothing. Nothing, nothing, they walk. I told you now, maybe I've told you my story, so that you see the course that was following us. I've told you how that by 11 o'clock in the night, 1, 1 p.m., just like you see 9 o'clock now, in remaining two hours, it will be 11 o'clock. We will carry lantern. I am my brother, my, my, my mother. We will start trekking to the stream. Why 11 o'clock? Because this place is very far. By the time we get to the stream, it will be around 3, 4, 5 o'clock. In the night, we'll be trekking. What are we going to the stream to do? To go and pack sand from the stream. So when we get there, we'll rest until maybe around 5.30 or thereabout. And then we'll enter the stream and start packing sand. That's how I live my life as a young boy. Cause. Devastation. My eldest brother, the, 
You know, you know that machine. Some of you, you are, you are not born then now. You know, how many of you know CD 175? <laughs> Some of, many of them don't know what the CD is. That's the time my brother. Then it was a. When everybody has finished riding CD 175 and left it and move on and they are riding cars and all of that, it was still. Every time they are pushing it, they are. Then he struggled and struggled and struggled and struggled and then was able to buy wait make I enter. You know the one they call me wait make I enter. Volkswagen. One door. If you want to enter, he said, wait, make I enter. He, he, the person will come out. They will. <laughs> I'm telling you my history. You see where I was coming from. I suffered. But when I got born again, this thing that I'm telling you now was what I heard. I was taught it by my pastor. So when I heard it, they showed me, showed me from, that's why I was brought up with this book. That's why anything that I'm telling you will open the Bible. I don't tell you from my head. That is why, that's how I was trained. That's how I was brought up. The Bible. That's why you see I'm addicted to this. If you finish, if he told us, he said, anybody, no matter when, when he finished flying and telling you all the stories and all of that, no problem, show me. If it's not found here, drop it. So he tooted, he was, we are trained this way. So when he finished teaching us and all of that, I said, if this thing is true, then it must work for me. Out of anger, it was in on a time. Those out, I was angry. Holy anger. I packed my thing with one of my friends. I said, Let us go to my village. Today, today, this thing, if it is true, it's gonna happen. I went to the village. I lament, put up a lamentation. Any cause that has followed me and my family and all of from today onward, as it is written. I have been delivered and redeemed from the cause of the law. Any weapon designed against me or any tongue that rises against me, every one of them stands condemned. I begin to, because you say, whatever you bind on it is bound in heaven, whatever you lose is loose. I begin to bind and cast and all of that. When I finish, I begin to declare, you will change, you will drive a new vehicle. This is your way to make I enter. Because that way to make I enter, it don't pack with the hang out. The whole tires are removed and all of that. God bears me witness. I lie not. I'm standing in the presence of God. Six, seven months later, I didn't go back to this. Seven months later, I went to the house. I went to my house, village. Guess what I saw? Five rooms down, five rooms up. Room and parlor. My brother built. I turned the other way. I saw another car. How did it happen? I asked him. He said, Me. He, said, he told me, He said, He does not know how it happened. Somebody just showed up and promised that he was going to do the build and complete everything. He said, Without giving him one naira, one kobo. He said, Whenever in your life, even if it is in your deathbed, any time you have money, pay me. Build the house from the beginning to the end. It wasn't long. My second brother, he built another gigantic house in the village and all. People were thinking that it was a new hotel and all of that. It wasn't. Everything began to open up. It works. So, if you are born again, you are ignorant, it's not going to work. And then for the fact that you are born again does not mean that it's automatically gone. Because what it means now is that now that you are born again, now that you are delivered, now you are saved from it now, you, have the, you stand in a position to be able to do what? Deal with those situations. Because that is why he said, any tongue that rises against you in judgment. So you enter your bloodline and begin to clean up 
So I did all that. Everywhere opened up. My sisters were getting married. Everybody was getting married. And things were happening and all of that. Till today. Why did it happen? Okay. Now, another big question is this. Why is it that people who are born again, who have been delivered from the course of the law, are still going through those courses? True or false? So why? Because that is another reason. That's the problem. That's where the problem is. Galatians chapter 3, I mean chapter 4, verse 9. But now, after that you have known God, or rather are known of God, how turn ye again to what? To the weak and beggarly element, whereunto you desire again to be in. When you go back again, those practices, those beliefs, those thought systems, those mindsets, Those things that you used to do or that your parents used to do or your father used to do. You go back and start doing those things again. It will come back again. It will return. And when it returns this time, it's going to be stronger than before. If you don't change your ways. This is as simple as that. I'm going to pray. But why I said, why I'm going to pray is, is because I want to give you this one. So that when I pray, you will see the result. Except you don't want it to happen. You will see the result. And it will happen because when we pray, immediately it will stop. It's not going to be till tomorrow. It will stop here and now. But, 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 don't go back to the vomit where you were saved from. Don't return to the vomit. Because in my family, there are certain people in my own family, there are people they don't talk to. There is one family opposite our own house in the village. The man was 86 years old. He was 86 years when he died. He was a, an idol worshiper, idol worshiper. The man is bent that he has a hunchback. This is how he is. Dirty, 86. Illiterate in the village. He died. They said my father was the one that killed him. 86 year old man. Because they were angry with us. They don't like us. So they say that my mother, if my father wants to deny that he has any hand in, my, in that man's death, that they are going to wash his body and then he will drink the water from his body. And my father said to prove his innocence, because if you try that within one week or one week is to me, you will die. Dirty, stinking body of a uh, 60, 86 year old man. He has a hunch here. He has a hunch on the back. He's an idol worshiper. He doesn't wash his clothes. He doesn't wear shoes. Guess what? I was there that very day. They washed his body. Brought it. They gave it to my father. My father drank it. You've not seen anything yet. So that's why I say, when you see my, you see my story, my story, my father drank it. <laughs> Five years later, he was still alive. Ten years later, he was still alive. Twenty years later, he was still alive. Nothing happened to him until when it was his time to go. I got him born again. I laid hands on him, prayed for him and all of that. When he was about to die, I was in Abuja. My mother was there. When I came back, my mother told me what was happening. He said he was seeing angels. He was so happy. He was so whatever. I know he's in heaven. But now see the thing. You know that family and my family, they know they see face to face. So you don't talk to them. They don't talk to us. 
You don't eat from them. They don't eat from you. Still today. So I said, I am not going to join. How many times will your brother sin against you and you forgive him? <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you. I said, this one is not up to 400. Now, not to talk about. So, I entered their compound. I greeted them. They gave me water. I drank. When I came back to the house, they said, where have you been since? I said, oh, I went to this family. They said, eh? Hey. I said, yeah. I said, I drank water. They said, they, they say, oh, my own. They gathered meeting. Gathered be God for meeting for me. They have committed. There is one other one the way they say it. That we have, that have gone to. He said that thing will follow me. It will follow my life. It will follow my family. That they reject it. It is not our. They said all kinds of whatever. And that. They, some, they stopped talking to me. He said, You shouldn't talk to them. You shouldn't go. Not to. Talk. He, they say, uh, Did you say that you drank water? I said, Yes. They say, nah, Abomination has happened. The unthinkable. See me today. See me today. I am the light in my family till today. If I had followed them, not to talk to them, not to keep malice, believe in all those things they do, I would have ended up back where we were before. And my situation and condition would have been worse than before. But I said no. Some of you are like that. There are some of you in the village, you have your family, there are some things you believe in. My the one, my immediate younger brother and sister, we are twins. I senior them. They, my immediate junior, they are twins. When they brought my brother died, my sister, the sister, the twin, said she wasn't there. He said she cannot see the corpse. He said, because if you see the corpse, so and so thing will happen. I said, chapter what? Verse what? It's not found anywhere. I said, okay, as you believe, so be it. I didn't believe. He didn't see the boy, the brother. He was buried, everything gone. Five years later, ten years later, look at their life, everything, devastation. My younger sister, I called her, I said, I warned you. I told you, I warned you. You chose to follow that path. Look at where your life is. Look at where everything, look at your husband, look at every devastation. All of them. When you go back to the same old pattern, you endanger your life again. That is what he said. But now, after that, you have known God or rather are known of God. Why turn ye again to the weak and beggarly element whereunto you desire again to be in bondage? Verse 10. You observe what? Days, you observe what? Months, you observe what? Times, you observe what? Years. Why? Because this is what is bringing you back to the same. When they pull you out, you go back again to the dungeon where you are drawn from. What is your problem? Because you are afraid of what they will do. You are afraid of what they will say. I stood my ground because I know God is over and above all. You can't stand with God and go down. They will hate you. They will not like you. But at the end of the day, you will be the last man standing. 
So I said, I'm not going. So I stood my ground at the end of the day. I didn't join them. December is coming. <sighs> Your whole body will start shaking. You must go to the village. You must go to the village. December. December to do what? It's Christmas. It's the day. When was Jesus Christ born? When? They told you. You can't find it anywhere here. You observe days and seasons and months and time and years. There is only three days, the three seasons that God has given us. He said the Pentecost, the, the Passover, the Pentecost, and the ingathering. He said this is the feast of the Lord. You must observe it every year. February 14th. Valentine. That's why your life is like that. Where is the source of it? You don't know the origin. You don't know the source. You don't know the connections. So you open up yourself to it. Command from among them. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Do not unequally yoked. Do not be unequally yoked with them. What relationship has Christ with Belial? What concord has righteousness with iniquity? I am the son of my. I am a prince. In my family, we are prince. Shut up! Disconnect yourself from it. Because that is what is killing you. The Bible says that you are a wild olive branch. And God went to that wild olive branch. He cut you off and then grafted you to the holy olive. So your root is no longer here. I am from above. He that is from above is above all. Jesus Christ is my Lord. He is my Savior. He is my life. I have changed my root. I believe it with my heart. I say it with my mouth. And I practice it. So when they say, come and do this one, they are doing some whatever in the village. And my brother said, there are some money they are contributing, you know, for all those whatever. And he said, he is contributing for me. I called him and said, me. I said, me. Money. <laughs> I said, you're your own. I said, my, I said, my wife, her name is Oyidi Alfred. <laughs> Not Abu. He don't come, that one don't come out. Daniela is Daniela Alfred. Olive is Olive Alfred. Samuel is Samuel Alfred. They don't have Abu again. They don't, that one don't go, so they don't belong to you. It's only me, and even me, I'm telling you with my mouth now. You're not my brother, you're not my sister. I'm not an Igbo man. I didn't come from this place. This so the only thing is that they told me that we came from the same womb. So that's why I'm here. If you help, if you need me and all of that to do X, Y, Z, I will do for you. As per having my link. He said, ah, don't say that to, when you die, who will, I said, don't bother about when, who will bury me when I die. I said, as a matter of fact, I will, not, I will not be buried inside here. You won't even see my dead body. Is it your problem? Okay, assuming that I'm, um, um, you are not going, I don't know, I'm not sure who is going to bury. Okay, if I die and I leave, she be the person don't die. My body will die. When he stay there for two, three days, I know where you are. You will know what to do. So what is your headache? What are you looking for in this life? Is it not a better life? Is it not a good life? To be with God? Then leave it. Do you know today that I'm talking to you, every one of them now they have turned to me. Anything that I say now is what stands. My sister say, now, now I have seen the light. Now I, anything you say now I will do it. Say now. My other brother now, the other day he called me, he said, that thing that I was telling him, now, he said, I led him to cry, I think two few days ago. 
old, old, all of them one by one. They gathered the meeting against me. They sent me back in. They say from today, we don't. He said this: you are born again thing. You must renounce it. Oh, if you don't renounce it, you leave it. I got up. I said it's too late. I said then back. I entered the house. Of course, you know my 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 kaya. It didn't take me ten minutes. Everything was inside the cellophane bag. I came out. I left. In those days, for four years, nobody saw me. In the university, I finished university. Nobody, they didn't see me. They didn't pay my school fees. Nothing. When they, everything. Because I stood my ground. Today, look at me. I am afraid of who? Lest you have bestowed upon you. Lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. He said he is afraid. Why are you going back to the same vomit? What is wrong with you? Oh, ye foolish Galatians. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, finally. What does he say? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Jesus Christ are done what? Stand in that freedom. Don't shift. Don't go back. Because they would want to draw you back. Don't go and join in the drinking. If the drinking is what kill your father. Don't join. If it's women. If it is men. Don't join. Don't be part of That's why he said, come out from among them. Touch not. I will receive you. You will be my son and my daughter. I will be your father. If you don't do that, you're wasting your time. Even though you have been delivered from the cause of the law, even though the price has been paid, you have been redeemed. You don't go back again. All the fetish things they used to do, their whatever, in my village, in my house, and all of that. When I go, I went there, my mother shouted. They said that every other person in the village that had done it, they have all died. The one that didn't die, they were mad. The one that are not mad, they are useless. So please don't touch this. I beg you, my son. I pitied her, I left her. A few days later, when I noticed that she has, I went secretly, collected those things, went to the back of the house, set them on fire, burned them. Even the seven book of Moses of my father. And one thick glass that he used, I broke all of them, scattered them, burnt all of them. Since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is suffering. It's a violent that will take it by force. You see, you see all of you. It does, you see, what God is looking for, he, the choice said, God is happy. He wants to demonstrate his power through you so that when men see you, they will know that no other person could have done this except God that is in heaven and they will give glory to him. He's not looking for the ones that have made it. He's not looking for the governors and the, and the, and the house of members of the, all this, whatever. He's not looking for them. He said, brethren, you see you are calling. 1 Corinthians 1, 26. He said, you see you are calling. Not many wise, not many noble. But the poor, the down and the out. They are the ones that God is looking for. So that he can dis- demonstrate his grace and glory in your life. And when you have reason, you will know that it is God and God alone that has done this in your life. We live by the rivers. We wash our hand with spittle. We live in the midst of abundance. We experience lack and scarcity every time. What is the cause of our problem? You are driven by tradition. Tradition of your parents. Tradition in your family. Tradition. I broke all of them from the beginning to the end. I broke all of them. I I say, I'm not coming. They stopped talking to me. Mm -hmm. 
I must disconnect. I disconnected. But that does not mean I say call them. They say call me. When they see me, they know. They will see. You see, when they see me, they, they ask all the village people when they come. They say, one name Moke. Because that is don't be angry. There's something that I want to ask. Why is it that you need the old? This other one will be your junior. Waiting they waiting you they do tell us. You see somebody that I'm older than with 10 years, 15 years, they look like 120, they look like Methuselah. Dried and aged and I say his life, eternal life, is at war. He said, because my source from the root, Jesus Christ, is one that I'm drinking from. Disconnected everything from. You see there. Do you know you have water, water pipe that is connected to your house? The water is not flowing because it's blocked. Something, the pipe is rusted. And then water is not flowing. It's not that the water is not with the water board. There is water, but there is a blockage. Cut it off and repair it and you see water. That's the problem. The supply is there. The grace is there. The glory is there. The power is there. But it's being short-circuited. It's blocked with sin, with tradition of man. Remove it and see what will happen. Say he's a cost. Because we say this costing. Is it as if the power of God is weak? That what devil is doing is stronger than is it not madness for somebody to think about it? That's why I say, Satan, you can't touch me. I'm untouchable. Say I'm untouchable. Say you can't touch me. I'm not afraid of any man. See, listen. I'm not saying it because I, I'm not afraid of any mortal man. Mention the name of the person. I don't fear you for nothing. The worst thing that you will do is it not to kill me. That's the highest thing you can do. Then go ahead and do it. Let's see. If God doesn't give you that power, you can't do it. They came to Jesus and said, the Herod is looking for it. He said, go tell that fox. You can't do nothing except that power is given to you. Anybody that can take my life is because God allowed it. If he doesn't allow it, you can't do it. Anything you like, do. You don't know who you are. You are a son of the most high. You don't think so. That's your problem. That's your problem. And why you are struggling with it is because of iniquity, sin here and there. He can't let you see. Clean yourself and see what will happen to you. You are a great man. You are a great man. I'm not saying you are a great man so that you'll be happy. I'm telling you, it's just like you are telling me now my name is, you are Pastor Fred. Are you trying to impress me? My name is Pastor Fred. He's given his known. You are born great. If any man is in Christ, you are a great man. You are a great woman. You can live on the shores of this world like this. Live victoriously. There are some things I'm going to show you. When I show you, it will blow your mind. How we're going about, we're thinking that uh, life is difficult. I'm very open and clean to everybody. I don't owe anybody anything. My God shall supply all my need if the price of petrol is moderate. And if the economy improves, God will supply all my needs according to his riches. Is that what he said? We are independent of this, country, of this kingdom. There are two kingdoms. They are moving parallel. They don't meet. The kingdom of this world and the kingdom of... They don't meet. They don't have anything in common. There is no common... They don't have anything in common. 
your problem is that you have one leg in the world. You have one leg where? First John 2.15. I'll close with this. First John 2.15. What does he say? Love not what? Neither what? The things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not. But we love the world. As long as you love the world, the thing that happens in the world and follow the world will be. Verse 16. He said, The things that are in the world, for all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh, the loss of the eyes, the pride of life is not of who? Of the Father, but of the world. Say bye bye. Like Paul, I have been crucified to the world, and the world has been crucified unto. I don't have any. Stay clean. I made a diagnosis of what the problem is. If you are here, because there are a whole lot of things are going to be happening from tomorrow. If you are here and you are not saved, you are not yet born again. You have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. I want you to come here fast. If you are not born again. Because as a matter of fact, this is a believer's meeting. This is not unbeliever's meeting and all of So we want to clean up and make sure that everything about your life is in shape. Before we begin to talk and do other things we want to do. And what I'm saying, listen, no, listen. It's not this type that people come here, you come here for the sake of coming. If you're not interested, if you're not ready, if you don't just want, you can go back to your seat. But if you make that decision, you stand on it. Did you hear what I said? If you say today, I want to surrender this, my life to Jesus Christ, to come and be my Lord and my Savior and run my life, and I make that commitment to follow you. I ask you for the grace. Be committed and be obedient to it. And God will change your life. Sin is a problem of man. You must quit. You must renounce it. You must reject it. You must abandon it. You must not meddle with it. You must fight it. With the power of God that is in you. I want you to stretch forth your hand with all your heart. Pray. Stretch forth your hand towards them. Ask God in heaven. Show mercy on this one. Grant them life. Eternal life that is in Christ. Let God know. Remind him for the sake of this one Jesus Christ came. He left heaven. For their sake. Jesus, he was telling me, he said, a young man had 100 sheep and 99 were safe and one got missing. He said he left the 99 and went after that one. So what he means is that even if you are the only human being on planet A, Jesus would have come for you. He loves you so much, so dearly. You are not here by accident. Pray and trust and believe him. Parana makeya fasua rembe de katuma lakaina versevri de braka. In the name of Jesus, say with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I have heard your word that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You sent him here on earth to die for my sins. He rose on the third day from the dead for my justification. With all my heart, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died for me. That I am a sinner. I cannot save myself. Have mercy on me today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, wash me with the blood of Jesus. Grant me Eternal life in Christ Jesus. I open my heart today. I say to you, Jesus, come into my heart and be my Savior and be my Lord. In the name of Jesus, grant me everlasting life. 
write my name in the book of life in the name of Jesus help me Lord help me Jesus help me Holy Spirit to live for Jesus to walk with him to love him and to obey him all the days of my life Satan hear me today I have got a new master his name is Jesus Christ he loves me he died for me I renounce you Satan I reject you everything that has to do with you all your lies all your deceptions I renounce them I reject you and everything you have to offer in the name of Jesus today everywhere my name is mentioned in the world of darkness by the blood of Jesus I severe them I nullify them I cancel them in the name of Jesus I am a new man I'm a new creation all things are passed away all things have become new thank you Heavenly Father glory be to your name thank you Jesus thank you wonderful Holy Spirit grant me into my heart today the Holy Spirit in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Heavenly Father you say with the heart we believe and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation Father you know the heart of these words they have come to you Jesus died for them he came and he died he rose from the dead for their justification they have believed with their heart, Lord, today. And they have confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Lord, on behalf of the church and everyone here, Lord, that you grant each and every one of them life eternal, which is in Christ Jesus. Write their names in the book of life, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sin that they have ever committed from today on, they are washed, they are wiped away. And we declare your word over them that if any man is in Christ, and they are in Christ indeed, from today they are a new creation. All things about them is gone. Behold, all things have become new in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. You can stand. I hope you take care of them. You know who they are. Lift up your hands to the heavens. See, today, 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 every cause that has followed you today, they will never rear their ugly head again in your life. sin and besetting sin every weight that is why he said lay aside weight and besetting sin the power behind those besetting sin and weight by the power of the risen Christ I break them off your life you will never come into bondage with them anymore anything that you are struggling in your life that is not of God that have remained today I cause them to go I cause them to die in the name of Jesus any covenant that was made on your behalf by any person that is alive or dead consciously or unconsciously in the world of darkness they mentioned your name wherever they take your name in by any person, whether they are alive or dead, in the name of covenant of what any sort, by the precious blood of the everlasting covenant, those covenants are nullified yeah. by the superior power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. We nullify them all. Yeah. We nullify every covenant on your behalf. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yeah. every covenant that you have established in the past, Father, today, by the precious blood of Jesus and by your mercy, let their sins not be remembered anymore. Let them be washed away completely and totally in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a new dawn in their life, a new dawn in their system, a new dawn in their business, a new dawn in their career, a new dawn in their business, a new dawn in their destiny. In the name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God bless you.